hype um, as Cosmic Eclipse has sort of got on. I think um, early on when we saw um, some of the um, scans from the Japanese um, uh, sets and stuff, no one really battered an eyelid over <laughs> this sort of archetype. And it was really just everyone accepting that the GX attack was very, very strong, but how do you build it? Yeah. And these two guys, they've said, well, we know, <laughs> and <laughs> we think it's amazing. So. Um, we're going to see an interesting clash here because it is a strange back and forth, this matchup. It is. And not only that, but although both of these players are playing Arsis, Diago, and Palkia, they have both taken very different yes. approaches to building their list. So just to give, we're not going to go through the whole list, obviously, but just to give you a brief idea, you know, Pedro's included stuff in there like you know, Lucario, Mail Metal GX, as mm -hmm. well as you know, Forge Urachi and the Fion from Cosmic Eclipse, yep. which is a pretty cool card. Yeah, it's an interesting tech card. It could come into play as well um, in this matchup for sure. Um, because sometimes you force the opponent to move out of the active. It's similar to a repel effect that we saw yes. in the Sun and Moon base set, and um, it can force something out of the way. And oftentimes, because Arceus, Palkia, and Dialga can take additional prizes when they take knockouts, even things like um, a Jirachi can give up two prizes and cause a big swing in games. Yeah. So that's a really thing, really interesting thing to follow. Absolutely. And then uh, on a similar token, looking at Connor's side, he hasn't got quite as many of these sort of like different techs. He's not playing any Jirachi, for example, but he is playing interestingly one of the Giraffe Rake from Los Funda, mm. as well as two Rayquaza GX. I think that's the biggest change here. I think Connor is going heavy energy switch route and two Rayquaza GX in his build to try and get towards that turn one a GX attack from the Arceus, Dialga, and Palkia. We're seeing some prizes here. Three Jirachi is not great. <laughs> that is not ideal at all. Yeah, that's a lot of Jirachi. That's consistent. It's a good thing he plays four, so he doesn't have like access to one, but still. Yeah, not Oof. ideal for him. I think those were Pedro's prizes that we saw first here. Yes. The gang of Jirachi. We'll get to see who goes first here, though. And uh, Pedro still could be in decent shape. Obviously, yeah. Jirachi is such a great uh, consistency sort of yeah. Pokemon that you can have in your list. But he's playing the full four count, and maybe he can still get some value there. And actually, I, I misspoke slightly earlier. I, I was a bit of an oversight. Both players are actually playing for Jirachi. So, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. So yeah, no, the bigger difference is yeah, just in you know, those requir requires us against uh, yeah, the Fiona and Lucario Mail Metal. But we are off, everyone. So it looks like Pedro's <laughs> going first. and. He found his fourth Jirachi, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Broken. We see a very big Lily as well. I think it was for seven cards. So a very good start from Pedro here. He's got that escape board early on. You can see on his board, he's already got an energy attached to his tag team. There's also a Dramper that he plays, a non-GX Dramper. Um, it does 70 and 70 more damage if it has two different energies attached to it. Um, so that's a card that you can use in combination with that GX attack to get some big uptrades. It's actually a big mirror match card because mm -hmm. it does enough damage to knock out Keldeo. So that, that's a really big find for him early on as well. Yeah, not only that, of course, but if, say, if you're up against you know, a Quagsire deck, for example, that plays Keldeo as well, it's just another good out to sure. you know, hit through that. So just a really great attack attack in general. It looks like a great catcher is what Pedro ends up finding off of the Stellar Wish there. This is a really, really strong start. He's got uh, the a skateboard, he's already drawn a bunch of cards, he's got his attachment, he's got um, you know, bench sitters for him as well, just for an easy turn two um, sort of GX attack. It depends on how fast Connor's turn could be because he's started with his own uh, tag team here, so there's no telling that he can't get a turn one attack. One thing that's very different from his list compared to the end resolve base builds is that the active Arceus Palkia Dialga is much more likely to attack um, if it's just stuck there, because you can just use energy switch shenanigans alongside the Rayquaza GX. So yeah. that's something we can definitely follow. Yeah, it's very, very powerful. It's, it's also important to note that Connor is, in fact, not even play, obviously play any end resolve. You know, some yeah. of these lists, they may play like one or two, but no, this list plays zero ends resolve. So he is very reliant, as you said, on getting those uh, Rayquaza GXs off so that he can you know, do the energy switch and get the, get the attack going on the Arsis Dialga and Palkia as soon as possible. So the first action we're going to see from Connor is that Cherish Ball. He's going to have a look through, see what's prized, first of all, and also make sure that he has access to cards like uh, the Dene GX if he wants to get a fresh hand, or even just firing off a Rayquaza GX early to try and go for that Stormy Winds ability. That could also be a route for him. Yeah, it could. And uh, looking through, he's... Yeah, he's having a little bit of a hard time deciding how he wants to sort of start things off here. He's uh, He has a lot of different options he can go for. It looks like it might be... Is that another Arceus Diago Ooh, Palkia? No. Nope. he's going for. Kay. So his hand is probably pretty good then. That's sort of what it tells me. Yep. Goes to the Keldo right off the bat. Attaches to the active. He's got a Cynthia in hand. Does he opt to play it just yet? Well, he's actually sh shuffling, so he might be opting for a s uh, different supporter here. Hmm. It's not looking hugely likely that he can get the turn one GX attack off. There's an energy switch in his hand, but I don't see any uh, Rayquaza or anything like that. So we're no. going to see a Lily here as well. So both players opting for a Lily approach. Yeah. 
which is pretty interesting to see. Of course, pre pretty strong allowing you to draw up until you have eight cards in your hand if it's your first turn of the game. And oh, a very big dead <laughs> change right there. He wants more. <laughs> he's been able to get energy guaranteed in the discard pile now, so he's looking for something like a cherishable energy switch would be the ideal here. But I don't think he's got that sort of combination going for him. No. It's a really awkward dead change, actually. It is. That, that hand is not great in the slightest. No Jirachi. No, there's a Poke Gear for next turn. But other than that, it's a Keldia of Radiant Forest. Yeah, not great at all. And just a pass from Connor. He's forced to pass it back over to Pedro now. So he might be the first player to be able to get that GX attack off if he chooses. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes, you will want to go for that GX attack early um, so that you can get maximum value from it. Um, but it's not all about whoever GX attacks first, of course. You're no, not course. dealing any damage, and at the same time, both players have the option to use Malo and Lana in their decks for healing. So the natural damage output of these archetypes aren't really that high. So oftentimes, it can be a healing war that ends up being who whoever comes out on top. Yeah, and it's um, quite important to note that you know, Connor, I believe, is not playing any kind of you know, engine like that. Connor's, I don't see a single Malo and Lana in his wow. entire deck list. So, yeah, he's, in fact, he's not even playing Tag Call at all. So, his list is much more based on Turbo. That's yeah. kind of the name of his list. And if your turn one isn't as stellar as you would like, Pedro's got to have the advantage already here as we see him cherish balling out his own Keldeo. Yeah, so Caldeo goes goes down. Oh, doesn't quite go down yet, but he's got his hand. Just going to go for the Stellar Wish first, trying to uh, dig for some more trainers. Very <laughs> fortunate for him that he was able to start with that one Jirachi after prizing three. Yeah, sounds pretty good to me. Pedro is now going to find himself a tag call. This is su such an integral piece of like new age decks yeah. uh, that we've mentioned over and over again. And Pedro's hand is already stacked. Yeah. I mean, you have to think about you know these starts, considering how you know Connor doesn't have any kind of you know out to healing this um, mm -hmm. Arsis Tiago Palkia in the active, which it may get damaged this turn if Pedro opts to go for the you know opts to go for the attack instead of going for the GX. Um, yeah, you, you got to say Pedro's in an extremely favourable position right now. Yeah, it seems really really solid, especially because he's already got that uh, Fion developed early on. So if uh, Connor just needs to put down, he needs to put like, down like two tag teams now as well to sort of deny Pedro from just taking yeah. one tag team knockout and then an easy route to victory on you know a Dedenne GX or a Keldeo GX. So yeah. getting that big early advantage is great for him here, as we see. He tackled, got himself those Malo and Lanas, just preparing himself really uh, for those situations. He grabbed two, uh, so his hand is pretty much set for the entire game now. It really is, and not only that, Connor's not playing any reset stamp either, so wow. there's like no way for Connor to you know, get rid of these Malo and Lanas out of Pedro's hand. That's absolutely incredible. Pedro is just in, well, he's basically got himself in a game-winning spot already. Yeah, exactly. Um, just because he's already secured those Malo and Lanas for himself. He'll be the one getting the initiative on the GX attack. So everything's going on for Pedro right now. It, it really is. We saw that the Cynthia and Caitlyn discarding. I don't miss what the discard was, but it was a Lily to get himself back a Lily. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, you know that works, right? So um, up comes the. Um, Narcissus Diagra and Palkia GX, uh, Chaotic Swell goes down as well, so yeah, going to stop Connor from putting down any stadiums of his own unless he can find another way to discard it, which again, looking at his list... Uh, I'm pretty sure they're both just based on Chaotic Swell because yeah. they're trying to maximize the usefulness of that Keldeo GX. Oftentimes, m uh, a lot of decks have answers to Keldeo GX in the form of a stadium, uh, the Power Plant. So both players for a heavy line of Chaotic Swell in their own list. So yeah. Pedro, seeing that it's a mirror match, thinking if I just get mine down, it's out of my hand, and Connor has to find his own way of discarding his own Chaotic yeah. Swells. Yeah, because of course, a sometimes little known rule of, of the Pokemon trading card game, you cannot play a stadium down which has the same name as the one in play. So Connor can't just play his own down and get and essentially discard them both that way. He need, you would actually need to, essentially that, that Chaotic Swell is now stuck there. Okay, so we saw Pedro use his Altered Creation GX attack. Uh, he had both the Metal and Water Energy attached, so now for the rest of the game he has a hidden 30 damage buff to all of his attacks, and whenever he does take prize cards he gets to take an additional one um, as he goes, so that's fantastic. Connor, he was able to pick himself up a Cynthia. This is a huge deal. It means that he's able to play his hand down, guarantee that attachment, and get himself a fresh six cards here. Yeah, so let's see what he actually does get off that. I do see... Oh, there's an energy switch. Is there a Rayquaza? Oh, there's a Mysterious Treasure. So he Mysterious Treasure? He has a few options here. I mean, it depends now if he thinks... He's seen Pedro just go ahead and grab two Malo and Lanas. He has. Right. So do you just start trying to churn away with Ultimate Ray ASAP? Or do you just say, I'm going to GX attack and... Um, you know, somehow find a way of stalling Pedro because, I mean, Pedro's hand is just growing and growing. It, it is. And it looks like Connor is saying, right, no, no point going for the ultimate raid this turn. Just going to flip my GX marker and out to Alter Creation GX. So now both players have, you know, all of that in effect, the extra damage buff as well as the prize buff. But 
now it's back to Pedro, and like we were saying earlier, Joe, that he's just in so such a far ahead commanding position. His hand is stacked. You know, he's got the he's got the ultimate ray uh, going off this turn, so he'll be able to load up something else. It's looking very, very good for him. And I don't see a reason why Pedro wouldn't just sort of sit on this hand. Everything looks perfect, and yeah, he's content. Yep. 180 damage goes on to Connors, Arceus, Dialga, and Palkia, and Pedro, very similar to Full Blitz, uh, is able to search his deck for three basic energy cards, and then um, he's allowed to attach these energies in any way that he likes, so it's a little bit more versatile than a Full Blitz, and he's opting to go for two metal energy and a water. That tells me a lot of these energies are going to be committed to the Dramper. Yeah, so onto, or maybe onto the Keldeo instead? He's just spreading it just out. Spreading out. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. So, you know, having the water option on the Keldeo just in case, but of course, yeah, that Dramper being a single prize attacker, going to be able to put in some really nice work in against uh, everything on Connor's board, basically, including Connor's own Keldeos. Yeah, and oftentimes in a mirror match situation like this, Pedro knows that um, there's often not going to be any answer to the Dramper because so many of these lists are great catcher based that putting the well, the higher amount of energies on the non-GX is just a safe route. Connor here, sort of fighting from behind. He's got a heavily damaged uh, tag team in the active. He's just benched down his second tag team, and you're seeing him treasure away a great catcher now. Um, so I guess, is this the turn he goes for the... No, he doesn't. He actually he's just, just thinning the giraffe, I think, here. Yeah, yeah. giraffe rig. Not for this matchup. <laughs> fuel for another mysterious treasure. And... Um, Let's see what else he wants to find. It's quite interesting that he's opted to include that. I'm trying to think of the, what matchups he would necessarily want that for. Obviously, he's you know, put a lot of consideration into his deck list, and I'm sure there's a very good reason for playing it. Uh, if, what, what do you think? Well, I think in combination with the Cryogonal, I think you're really trying to just have a lot of answers to controlling archetypes, which makes a lot of sense to me. Like, if he's already playing Mysterious Treasure, getting early Giraffe Rigs can really surprise people out of nowhere. That's a very Maybe good point. Maybe stop the... Uh, Elba Bryson Man sort of combo with people if they're not really anticipating a giraffe rig coming out of nowhere. Yeah, that's true. Or you can even do like say, you know, obviously towards the end of the game, a Pidgeot as a control usually tries to use chip chip by ice axe to sure. control the top deck. So if you put that in the loss zone, all of a sudden they can't exactly they can't put it back with the resource management on your own guru. So there goes a switch. Yeah, um, into he's the been able to manipulate his energies towards his next. Um, Arceus, Palkia, and Dialga. So he's hoping to pretty much just abandon the one that he, atta he GX attacked with and hoping that, you know, he doesn't have heal available to no. him. So he's just going to have to try and use the energy switches to bounce around his attackers instead. Yeah, and the energy switch is exactly what he needs to find here, I believe, if he wants to proceed with this. So does he get it? No. Ooh, it's, again, it's a very rough one. And there's no real safe place for him to go. He's just going to have to try and go into a Keldeo. A Pedro already holding switch in his hand. Yeah. And he's definitely got energies for this Dramper as well. He's got everything in his hand already, so... He's just, you know, so far ahead right now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he has energies in hand. If not, it might be an end result. Yeah, there's a water. Okay, there's water in his hand. So, there's... But it's like you were saying before, just, you know, Pedro's hand is far, far, far <laughs> too good. He's not been disrupted at all. He's been allowed to, you know, set up his hand in exactly the perfect way. And he's even got a switch into the Jirachi, so he yep. can dig for some more with the Stella Wish. I mean, if you're Pedro, you really cannot ask for much more than this. Yeah, the hand just gets better and better. Uh, he's going to make sure that he puts himself in as good of a situation as possible here. Um... He's eyeing up Tag Call and a few other options here. There's not really a huge amount he really needs no. at this point. He's got so much going on in his hand. He, he's just making sure that he doesn't get complacent. You know, mm -hmm. just He's you know, got the option to do the switch, so he may as well switch it to the Jirachi, dig for an extra trainer, make sure that he's not missing anything that he might need for later on, trying to eliminate all opportunities for Connor to make a comeback. And in fact, Connor just concedes. Yep. Uh, as Pedro promotes that Dramper, obviously being able to knock out Keldeo in one shot uh, would mean that Pedro would go down to four prize cards. Connor, without any reset stamps, knows that he's just a great catcher away <laughs> yep. from uh, from losing with that heavily damaged Arceus, Palkia, and Diago on his own end. So he's going to buy himself some time. Something we mentioned earlier in yes, the pregame. Um, give himself enough time to win a game two and maybe even a game three. Yeah, and, his, and like, we, like we said quite, quite a bit during that game, Pedro was in such a commanding position, and uh, Connor recognizing that, you know, that, like we were saying before, just thinking to himself, okay, I know there's like a 0.001% chance <laughs> I actually win this game. Let's just, let's just scoop it up, save the time, go to game two, maybe I can get myself a better start. I think Connor is going to be, his back's going to be against the wall. I, yeah. think, I think the tech cards that Pedro has chosen um, should put him in a pretty good spot in mirror map situations. He's got a Dramper that can deal with Keldeo very easily. He's got plenty of Malo and Lana on his own end to sort of undo the damage that Connor can put out. He's really just hoping that he can sort of turbo out against Pedro. And when you're going first, the energy switch shenanigans aren't as useful as when you go second because you can't even attack uh, on the first turn regardless. So it feels like 
Pedro is happy going second here, um, especially if he's able to hit his end resolve. So Connor's really going to need a slower start from Pedro if he's going to be able to close out this game, just yeah. because he doesn't have as many answers in his list. No, he really doesn't. And uh, yeah, Pedro has very come very much prepared for not just the mirror, but obviously for the mirror as well as uh, you know any other matchups that may come his way. I mean, it's um, yeah, this sort of more turbo build of. Um, of, of this deck that uh, Connor has opted for. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's, it's slightly more likely to get the, uh, the turn one or turn two ultimate ray, but uh, all the same, if you can't deal with the actual threats that your opponent's putting out, then you end up with a repeat of what <laughs> happened in game one. Absolutely. We saw even more Jirachis in the prizes. I think a couple for Connor there. Yeah. We're just going to see Pedro's now as they sift through their opening hands. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be feeling pretty good. Um, he seems like he was in control throughout yeah. the entire first game. So yeah. those are much better prizes as well. No, no <laughs> Jirachi and uh, only one Malo and Lana. So yeah. that's quite important. So he has the access to the other one at least. He could maybe get it back with a Cynthia Caitlin if he needs to before he picks up the second one after prizes. Absolutely. So Connor going to be kicking us off here. He starts off with a Keldeo. He's also got uh, the Viridian Forest down and he's also able to Lily for a bunch of cards. So his hand, not too shabby. Yeah, it's a pretty decent start from Connor. All he really needs to do now is to maybe put down a Arsus Dialga Palkia with an NG on it. It looks like he's going to got the Mysterious Treasure, so yeah, he'll be able to do that quite handily. And it's a great target for the Mysterious Treasure as well. We have to remind you that he's playing the Rayquaza GX as his main energy accelerating engine. Um, so getting energies guaranteed in your discard pile just means that Stormy Wings has very low risk. Yes, absolutely. And uh, just to remind you guys at home, in case uh, you're not, uh, you don't know what Rayquaza GX's ability does, so the Stormy Wings ability, just when you play it down onto the bench to Rayquaza GX, you just discard the top three cards of your deck, and then you can take a basic engine from your discard pile and attach it to the Rayquaza GX. It's a card that Pedro is actually really familiar with. That's yes. The, that's the card that brought him far in the World Championships. We're going to see now the Stormy Wings. Pedro didn't get to see that in the first game at all. Um, but you're going to see him grab the Metal Energy that he just discarded into the discard pile, put it straight onto the Rayquaza. He's actually opting to attach to the Keldeo here and sending it Pedro's way. This opens up the options for um, Energy Switch players to start using Sonic Edge as quickly as possible. It, it can even threaten a Resolute Blade GX early on if Pedro wants to get really ambitious and spread his board out. Um, that could really be punished heavily. So Connor, keeping the options open right now. And I think that does make sense as well because, it, you know, it, you can still do energy switch plays to maybe get off the ultimate ray, ray and turn two or turn three, but I sure. think putting the energy onto the active, it means that it turns the Keldeo, like you said, into a more immediate attacking threat mm -hmm. that can just put out damage whilst you know, we're having to wait a bit longer for yeah, Pedro to be able to answer it, say, with like a Dramp or something like that. Yeah, it makes Pedro sort of think twice about going like really wide on his board and going for a Dedene and getting a bunch of cards and really throwing caution to the wind. At least Connor is now representing that threat. Yeah, he is. So... Uh, from Pedro's turn, we do see they does start off with the Cherish Ball, grabs himself a uh, Arcus de Aga Palkia GX of his own, looks through the rest of his deck just to see what's there. We do see yeah, the, the Cynthia Caitlin is available to him. He'll recognize that one of his Malo and Lanas is in the prizes, but otherwise his prizes are pretty reasonable, and uh, that will be enough for him. Yeah, I definitely saw End Resolve in his hand, um, so that might be an option that he could go for, depending on if he has like other draw options available. Maybe he needs to follow that up with a Dedene GX. Possibly with, you know, finding a switch is kind of the thing you want to combine um, with this end resolve. But yeah. not looking too great for him right oh, he's now. Actually, he's actually got two of them in hand. So those are both the ones he plays. Uh, Metal Energy onto the Arceus Dialga Palkia GX. Uh, he's got the, oh, he actually got the Malo and Lana in, in hand as well. His hand is basically just all support. <laughs> yeah, he's got a strange debate here. Um, end resolve would just be like an end resolve and pass. Because yeah. he can't move his Keldeo. But it can develop a lot of energies. Guzma and Halla instead could get you an energy out of the deck as well as like a stadium and a tool card that could get you towards um, an escape board. We know he's already got his other Mallow and Lana in hand and a Jirachi. So working towards that later on. Instead, he's actually just going to use the initial effect for Guzma and Halla. No discard. Just going to use the Viridian Forest before bouncing it with Celtic Swell, I think, here. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So you use the Guzma and Halla to grab the, grab the Celtic Swell. Obviously, with that effect, it means that something going on? Yeah, they're just making sure, Connor's oh, just making sure that he's only using the primary effect of Yusra yes. and Halla. You're not forced to do the discard. You can choose to just go ahead and grab a stadium if that's all you're after. Yeah. And I think Pedro's just choosing to thin the deck a little bit uh, with the Guzma and Halla here, just getting out of the way now uh, with some painful discards in hand. He's choosing to just sort of thin the deck as much as he can and work towards a better turn next turn. Yeah. Something I was curious to see is whether, you know, he actually has targets for the yeah, the parts of Guzman Halley does actually play one rainbow energy, so he's yeah. probably included in that in that in there just so that he can search the spe special energy with it if he wants to. Yeah. But and he's got and tool wise he's got the escape board. So yeah, he can actually grab all three with exactly. Guzman Halley. It's a great little one of. I don't think you'll ever see more 
copies of Guzman Hallett in any deck just no. because Tag Call gives you great access to the card already. Yeah. But you can just, if you build your sort of archetype to just have like some of these important one offs uh, you can really work around it well. Yeah. It goes straight over to Connor. He's going to waste no time. He's just going to energy switch, attach up to that Keldeo, and start Sonic Edging. Of course, it goes through all effects, so a Keldeo can attack another Keldeo, ignoring the pure heart ability. Yes, yeah, so that's a really sort of yeah, aggre uh, aggressive turn from Connor there, just very simple, knowing that putting out an attacking threat this early means that Pedro is forced to tap a little bit more of an awkward decision, but it looks like he does just go for the Malon Lana. Again, primary effect only. Just yeah. switching, no discards, because he's got such a low hand here um, that he's just going to have to attach yep. and go fire off his own GX attack here. Yep. So it means that next turn he'll be able to do some... Oh no, actually, he's not even on next really turn. really bad. I'm, wow. I'm actually pretty surprised that he discarded the Viridian Forest because now he's praying for top decks. Yeah, maybe he could have you know, waited one turn just to make sure he can guarantee himself the energy and then you replace it with the Swell, but... Let's see what we're working with here. Oh. He's got a three-card hand. I think he has another Malolana in hand, so he's now going to use the full effect here, heal off that Arceus Palkia Dialga and give himself a Stellar Wish opportunity. Right, okay, so maybe he can find something off of this to go one, two, three, four, five. Does he find something to just to draw him more cards? I mean, that's what he needs right now. Feels like it's got to be a supporter for next turn. I think he's just sort of having to say, yeah, this yeah. Jirachi's going to go down, I yeah. guess. I mean, also, this is fine, to be fair. You know, Connor has not fired off his own GX attack yet, so a Caldeo carrying one Jirachi for one prize d is not really the end of the world. Yeah, I mean, you can still go down the old traditional route, and yeah. uh, Connor doesn't have to use the Altered Creation GX stack. There's already damage on a Keldeo, so if he can knock out a Jirachi, there's already an Arceus Palkia Dialga. Mm. The six prizes are mapped out for him yeah. without having to use Altered Creation, so this aggressive route really paying dividends for Connor right now. Very much so. It looks like he's opted to attach an Escape Ball to the active as well. Could be considering a, 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 a one energy retreat. Of course, Keldeo having a retreat cost of two, but other than that, looks like a Cherish Ball's been, been played, and Connor's grabbed himself with the Denny off of that, so he's going to be able to see a lot of his deck. Yeah, I think he's thinking possibly the uh, ultimate ray would be a stronger attack here just because he can get even more energies and even more backup Keldeos working. Absolutely. So again, he's just giving himself the options right now. There's nothing wrong with using a Sonic Edge here, but maybe trying to use your Arceus Palkia Dialga can open up even more avenues for yeah. you. Sadly, not going to be an option here. Looks like energy switch was co a complete whiff, so no options here to use the ultimate ray this turn. Looks like he's going to have to be content doing the Sonic Edge again after all. We are going to see the Cynthia though. I think, Ooh, to be fair, Sonic true. Edge is still really solid here because Pedro basically has to attack with his Arceus Palkia and Dialga yeah. outside of crazy ends resolve plays yeah. going haywire, but we know Pedro's hand is only a Lily right now. Uh, yeah. So Connor expects the attack from Arceus Palkia and Dialga no matter what next turn, so keeping that pure heart ability live seems still very, very strong. Yeah. Pretty much the only difference that we're going to see here, if, depending on what gets hit, is the difference between like an optimal turn and a still a very good turn, and right. it looks like it's going to have to be a settling for a very good, because again, no energy switch off of the uh, Cynthia. He's also going to bounce Celtic Swell with more Viridians that he's playing. So he's making sure that he doesn't miss a beat with his energy cards. Obviously, one thing with Stormy Winds is you're only seeing half the cards of an end resolve. So yeah. making sure you have the right combination is such an important factor for his list as he's going to take the first prize here. And we do see an energy top deck from Pedro. That means he gets a clean six cards. Yep. And he's going to be settling for no damage this turn. But hopefully he can get some backup attackers on his own end. This is a really big six cards. Yeah, it really is. What does he actually see? Now... It's interesting to see, does uh, Pedro, he does play great catchers, so if he manages to find one of them, then he could would be huge. Yeah, that would be really, really <laughs> good. Then he could like KO a, a Rayquaza or a Dedene and uh, put himself in a really good position, but it looks like that's not what's happened here. He's drawn into a lot of energy cards. I think he does at least get another Keldeo that he can use to power up rather than powering up a damaged one. So you can see him mulling over his options, sort of playing out the turns and seeing what his route to victory is going to be here. Now, I was just having another look through Pedro's list. I'm not sure if it will come up in this particular match, but there's one card that's very, very interesting. Is this. He is playing one Misty and Lorelei. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's actually huge. That would get Resolute Blade out of nowhere sometimes, yes. which could really catch Connor off guard. That's something that we'll have to follow. It's a great pickup from you. Good yeah. catch. <laughs> It's, um, I mean, the only thing about it is that obviously to get that extra effect of it, you do need to discard five cards. So yeah. Yeah, his hand has to be loaded, but if that wins you the game, it doesn't <laughs> matter, does it? Yeah, we've seen his hand can get loaded sometimes yeah. with things like Cynthia and Caitlin sort of growing your hand the entire time, as Very well as lots of Stellar Wishes. Very so. much. Pedro here having to settle for zero damage, that ultimate ray, attacking into the pure heart ability of Keldeo. So he's doing this simply so that he can get some more attackers developed yeah. because he is pretty behind right now. Yeah, he is pretty behind. I mean, it, obviously he's got a bunch of energy on the board now, which is still which is a great thing, but the fact that he's not been able to do any damage means that he's his prize is... Uh, he's, he's not getting further towards advancing his game state towards a win. So right. 
He's uh, still got six rides left to take. They are kind of mapped out for him. He could just you know, take two knockouts on uh, non-tag team GXs, for example, but it's still going to be tricky. It looks like Pedro's still opting to favor his RCSD algorithm. Palkias, I think what he's doing now, he's setting a stall out and saying, I know that my heals are fantastic against Connor's deck. I'm going to limit myself to four bench because I don't want to <laughs> fall prey to a Keldeo GX attack. Um, and if I can just keep bouncing between my Arceus Palkia and Dialgas, if I can find my great catchers, the game is mapped out for me. There's yeah. a Dene GX on the board, there's a Rayquaza GX on the board. That's six prizes thanks to my GX attack that I've already used. And as long as I can uh, buy myself enough time, Connor still yeah. will be at a disadvantage. Yeah. Also, not to mention, uh, uh, you know, earlier we saw that I think it was one Milo and Lana and one Symphony and Caitlyn get discarded. So you might think, oh, he actually doesn't have that many heals left. He's playing three Milo and Lana yeah. and two Symphony and Caitlyn. So no, even with those discards, he's still <laughs> got plenty more to work through. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Connor now giving himself once again a nice Cynthia here, refreshing his hand. There's the energy switch, a little late. Still pretty happy with it. 110. It's going to be content. And I think this is a much better 110 because, as you said, Petro's already got two Malawananas in his discard pile. So it's a lot less yeah. likely from Connor's perspective that this, is, this damage is going to get yeah. undone. Yeah. Has he actually got two in a discard pile or is it just one in the one for Caitlyn? It possibly. Yeah. yeah, yeah we'll it, see now from this tackle. Yeah, There's also the one prize that we have. For yeah, yeah, exactly. That, that's why I'm saying it makes a big difference. If he's actually discarded two already, then that means Malawanana is not an option this turn. And that would be very brutal. We'll see Pedro mulling through his options with the tackle now. There's the Cynthia Caitlin. Does is there a second Malo and Lana available? Might oh. just have to be a target to discard for your Cynthia and Caitlin that you grab here. Like a supporter that's not so handy. Um, he is sifting through. He's going to grab that Misty <laughs> and Lorelei. There you go, it's been revealed. So <laughs> Connor's going to be looking at him thinking Oh boy, I've got to be careful. <laughs> One of those sort of cards that makes your glasses steam up when you see it. <laughs> like, oh my goodness, <laughs> this is a card that this can just do a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If it goes off, it really does go off. Yeah. Just uh, again, just as a more, I guess, specific reminder. It, um, the first effect, if you play it, just allows you to grab free water energy from your, from your deck. But then the second effect, if you discard five cards from your hand, <laughs> your water G Pokemon can use their GX attacks even if you've already used a GX attack this game. Yeah, it's wild that a minus six can still <laughs> be a playable card <laughs> <laughs> just because of how powerful GX attacks can be at times. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, who wants to do two Resolute Blades in one game, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're going to see Pedro is going to discard a Metal Energy with his Cynthia Caitlyn. Obviously, he's grabbing back a Malo and Lana for some future turns. Um, and we might just, again, it looks like I didn't see any um, any great catches from him. No, he has got himself a switch, though. Okay. There's, there's no heal, but still it's better, it's better than you know, not switching at all. Yep, exactly. And, and there's not much else going for him, so it might just be he's going to continue to deck bin with Ultimate Ray uh, for zero damage again yep. and just power up that Keldeo. I mean, you know, it's an absolutely fine play. It means that uh, your deck is uh, extra thin. It means that you're, you're more likely to just hit those last little bits you need to uh, get the... To, to get to your great catches, and, and that's gonna be the great catch is going to be very important for Pedro yeah. to find to, in order to win this. They're pretty much the only cards that matter. Yeah. <laughs> <now>. <laughs> He's saying, my win condition is only ever there. Yeah. Let's make sure that's uh, available to me yeah. and uh, try and do this retreating tactic, buy myself some time, make sure my Matalo and Lanas are working for me. We'll see what Connor's going to try and do here. He could well opt to go for. Okay, we're going to see a switching play into his own uh, Jirachi here to try and get some Stellar Wishing. Potentially yeah. great catches on the table for him. Yeah, we can see if he digs for... Oh, wait, uh, is that one there? No, it's not. It's a Mysterious Treasure Just Pokegear. Just more Cynthia's, yeah. Let's go do some more digging. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, he's over and over again, just Cynthia-ing into Cynthia. Yeah. Uh, trying to see some better cards. He is so combo orientated. It, it does take up a lot, like a large portion of the deck. Like sometimes you say that four copies of End's Resolve sort of dilutes the deck, but yeah. he's even more so diluting his deck by having four Energy Switch and two Rayquaza GX. And zero End's Resolve. And zero End's Resolve, yeah, because at least the End's Resolve thins cards out of the yeah. deck. There's a great catcher, though. That Ooh. could be a big deal. Yeah, that is a big pickup. He's up. already eyeing up his discards, so yeah. you know he wants to do it just but so he can GX attack here. There is uh, oh, a Celtic Swell goes down as well, which is uh, pretty interesting. There's a uh, goes down a great catcher, I guess, discarding another Swell and a Cherish Ball, and uh, he's going to bring up yeah the damaged Arceus, the Argo and Palkia. Yeah, Keldeo coming back in, and we are going to see that GX attack from the Keldeo. I would imagine. Yeah. There it is, three prizes for Connor, going down to just two remaining. So as long as he can find a way to um, deal with you know the damaged Keldeo from Pedro, or go the long way around <laughs> yeah. and deal with an Arceus, Palkia, and Dialga. That's going to be his route to victory. Pedro, though, his board state is looking still pretty reasonable. Um, 
So I think it's still going to be, you know, a few turns until this game is concluded. Yeah, don't let the prize cards deceive you. Obviously, Connor only has two prizes left to take, but yeah, Pedro's going to make him work very, very hard to take those. And uh, I don't think, considering how much time is left, I mean, you, Pedro might consider conceding here, but I don't think it's, you know, like a, an insta concede at this point. He's taking a long decision to see whether or not it's worth me trying or worth him going straight into a stellar wish option. He's picked up a great catcher. That's a huge oh, draw for turn. That is exactly what he needed, and. Uh, does that make his switch a little bit more awkward? Or, oh no, of course, he's got the man on Lana, so he, I think he's always bringing up the Caldeo because that means that he can play it and heal that damage off. He might be going down to a zero card hand once again here. Oh no. And just hoping that the three prize cards that he draws is enough to sort of carry him yeah. through the game. Which it should be, especially considering there is about like a 50 50 chance that he'll grab his other Malo and Lana. Exactly. So this is where the big player's got to make the big decisions. You're seeing straight away Pedro opting to well he's having a big deliberation yeah. you're going to get three cards for free from prizes so yeah maybe going down to zero is worthwhile here yeah. it seems like it's got to be his route here yeah and uh opting to discard a water and a metal energy does bring up the Ar the arcus diago and palkia i think the reason why he might be a little bit hesitant about it is because there are no water energy left in his deck so if he does the great catcher here that's all his water energy gone so the caldeo will not be attacking pedro is all in um he's going to go for the rayquaza that means that he at least has options open for things like Drampa to yep. finish off the Dene if he needs to. He's going to go for that ultimate ray. Obviously, he's got that additional hidden 30 damage buff. You can see the GX marker has been flipped. Yeah. He'll be taking three prizes here. No energies opting. Well, he's opting to attach no energies here. And it's but down to him to pick up some big prize cards. Yeah, there are no energies left in his deck, that being yeah. the issue. Oh, and he's missed the Malo and Lana. Missed Malo and Lana, but he's still just great catcher. Yeah. Great catcher's the only card that matters for him <laughs> yeah. again. He knows that Connor can't achieve a one-hit KO with anything that's currently on his board. Yeah. Um, he's safe from anything like a Mega Lopany Jigglypuff. We so I think there's yeah. no real attack that can sort of burst on, onto the field. Pedro yeah. knows he's got one turn yeah, we at the very least. We also confirm Connor is not playing a Misty and Lorelei of his own. So right. we're not, <laughs> not going to see some uh, crazy Resolute Blade action here either. Yeah, wow, that's, uh, this is going to be very, very close either way. And I think, actually, what will be interesting as well to see is whether Pedro did get a Water Energy out of his prize. I can't remember, were there any Water Energy prize at the beginning of the I'm game? I'm not uh, very confident uh, that he had any energies in there, to be honest. We're seeing Connor now. He's got his Stellowish up front. He's gone ahead, gone for a Lily for a bunch of cards. He's griffing onto Great Catcher. Nothing too helpful, though. I think at this point, it's really down to see what yeah. Pedro draws. He doesn't have reset stamp. He can't disrupt Pedro. It would be a three for three swing anyway, yeah. so it's not a huge deal. Um, it would be like three random cards for three yeah. random cards. It's more or less the same thing. So so I've just worked it out. Yeah, there's um, if there's no water engine in the prizes, then the only way that Keldeo is attacking is if Pedro can find his one rainbow energy to, right, to attach right. to it and then yeah, do Sonic Edge or Resolute Blade if he can you know, get the Misty and Lorelei off. I'm pretty sure his hand size is going to be too low for that. It's just going to be down to can Ultimate Ray deal with the Dene for the game. Pedro coming in with his own Arceus Palkia and Dialga, trying to put Pedro basically on a one-turn clock yeah. here. So Ultimate Ray comes down, no energy attached with Connor. Does Pedro find the other great catcher? Well, oh, his hand is insane. He's got a Dene, he's got himself an escape board and a Lily. He's oh. going to be drawing a bunch of cards Oh here. my goodness, that's exactly what he needed. Tackle can even help thin the deck. This is going to be phenomenal. He's got so many options once again. Yeah, yeah he really does. Um, he's Tackle can help deck thin before any other action. He obviously just wants to make sure that he you know, does it, plays in the right order. He wants to maximize his chances of being able to find this the last great catcher to win the game. Although, wait, actually, having said that, I believe he's playing... Yeah, he's playing two. He had to discard one earlier, didn't he? I'm not sure if he has any left. I'm pretty sure there's one in his deck still. Oh. It's definitely what he's digging for. Okay. I mean, I don't see any other win condition for no. him if he's... Like, he wouldn't still be playing unless that's what he's got to dig for. Yeah, that's right. It was probably just something else I saw discarded instead. And yeah, that's Lily. Does Here's he the first five. <laughs> <laughs> five cards. Switching outs are still good outs. That allows yep. you to Stellar Wish for more. He yep. does draw into a switch. Yeah, that's... He's uh, got himself Stellar Wish and Dead A Change. So he could just play switch here, Dead A Change, yes. see a fresh six. Essentially, it's an 11-card dig. Yes. He I can tackle more cards out of the deck, I think. Or at least have a look. Yeah, he's going to Cynthia grab that Cynthia Caitlin. In fact, I wonder if he can actually draw enough cards to, to, get, to guarantee it off the dead day change. His deck is actually looking pretty thin. Yeah. You're not wrong. I'm going to see that switch here. Mm -hmm. It'll be a dead day change for a fresh six and then dig even deeper. Maybe a few more cards that he can play down. But nope, the hand's going to be thrown away. Yep. Six fresh cards and then five more after the Stellar yeah. Wish if he misses this. Uh, it'll be the Dene. It'll be gutted actually, up I think there's the five cards in his deck. I think he's got it guaranteed. Well, he's looking through. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't seem as confident. No. There's a cherish, <laughs> a cherish ball. ball. Can he thin any uh, Dene's? 
Yeah, it was the top card. Oh, <laughs> it's always the way. It's a, yeah, it is. Oh, I mean, so yeah, it's not guaranteed now, but uh, agonizing oh. stellar wish here. Yeah, not quite guaranteed. Two that are in the bottom of the deck, so he's got to avoid it. that. Great he gets it there, and he's able to simply bring up the Dedenne GX on Connor's board and take three prizes with Ultimate Ray. Crazy turn from Pedro, <laughs> insane prize cards. Absolutely, and Pedro did there, he also just draw as, like, a bunch of cards to dig through his deck, find the last great catcher he needs to take the last three prizes and win the game. Congratulations to Pedro, he, he's giving a <laughs> massive sigh of relief there, and he, who can blame him? He had to take some calculated risks. <laughs> uh, he went for the promotion of Keldeo to go down to a zero card hand just to heal up his Keldeo so he was a bit more safe from random non-GX attackers from taking the knockout on Connor's end. That meant that Connor guaranteed could not win the next turn, saying that if my prize cards are good here, um, I could be able to just push for game myself the following turn. Expert play from Pedro. Yeah, and again, again showing why he, he is you know, hands down one of the best players in the whole, whole of Europe. You know, so many accomplishments behind him, and it is you know, going through plays like that and his uh, thought process like that that enable him to have the success that he's had. And it's kind of what we said earlier. It's that pre-tournament preparation. Pedro with